Hi, my name is Boris, and in this video, I'm about to show you 10 workflow tips for Ableton Live. These are small techniques that can improve both your sound and your overall production experience. But before we get into the detail, if you like what we are doing on this channel, consider subscribing for more Ableton Live tips like this one. And the first category of workflow tips is going to be using features that are unique to Ableton Live. If you're using Ableton, it's in your best interest to utilize the features that make people switch to Ableton from other DAWs. And one of the best things about this software is not only being able to work in the arrangement, but also in the session view. In the session view, you are really able to mix and match different ideas together without having to rearrange tracks in the arrangement view all the time. This is especially useful at the beginning of the production process. At that stage, you are just coming up with ideas. And it's always useful to play different clips together to check how they sound. This is especially useful in any loop-based electronic music genre. Session View also allows you to create different sections for your track when you arrange your clips in rows and you can then call these rows your different sections and when you're done making these final steps in Session View you can take a couple of approaches to arrange your track in the arrangement and one of the most fun ones is to just record the Session View into the arrangement and have a bit of a live performance while doing so. And working in session view is a lot of fun, especially if you have a MIDI controller that can control the session, something like a launchpad and a Kai APC or the dedicated Ableton push. Okay, so tip number two is to listen to loops while your track is playing. Some producers actually switch to Ableton Live because this DAW allows them to quickly preview a lot of loops without having to import each clip into the arrangement. And that's super cool because Live actually matches the loops to the tempo of your track so that it all plays in sync. So for example, I have this drum loop right here. And I can search for melodic loops now to see what fits. So let's go to our everything bundle and under the orchestral tools, acoustic melodic house themes pack, I can find a bunch of loops that are melodic. Basically, this feature is really nice because as you can see, we are having our project at 124 BPM and our loops are all at 120 and Ableton Live nicely matches and actually warps these loops to match our tempo. Okay, so tip number three is to take advantage of native synths and libraries. Because actually, in my opinion, some of the most underrated features of Ableton Live are in the built-in synthesizers and effects. And, and many users actually skip these because they find the built-in presets quite lacking, but actually many users don't even download the additional packs that Ableton has to offer which contain a lot of additional presets. Ableton actually offers over 70 gigabytes of packs for Suite users and over 10 gigs if you own Ableton Standard. And this goes for both sample packs, MIDI's, presets and all sorts of devices. There is really a lot to choose from. If I, for example, go to snares, you can see that there is a huge selection of samples to choose from. And the same applies to instruments. For example, analog has not too many presets, but here, but here the library expands. Also, operator gets some really cool presets with the expansions of Ableton. So this is really a crucial element if you... So the expansions really give you a lot of possibilities to choose from. And also the native synthesizers are really underrated because they are actually very good sounding and they are not too demanding when it comes to CPU usage. And they are really good choices if you are looking for a lighter version of sounds that come from VSTs. Some of these synths have a slightly different layout. It's the Ableton sort of layout, which consists of different tabs that you have to click on in order to find the parameters you're looking for. Some of the controls don't have knobs. For example, analog has only these numbers over here, which you can drag up and down. Same goes for operator. And actually 
but this actually also can be useful. These things are really nicely integrated into the Ableton workflow. You don't need to have any floating windows on top of your DAW and it's really nice and tidy. And after a few minutes of messing around with these synths, you will surely find your way around every tab that is inside these synthesizers. They are not really that complicated. To give you a quick overview of what's possible with the Ableton synthesizers, we've got three main synths. We've got Analog, which is a three oscillator analog modeled synth, which would be an alternative to classic analog synths, a Moog or a Roland Juno or a Jupiter. And analog gives you a simple subtractive synthesis and really nice warm tones. Then there's operator, which is an FM synthesizer. So let's say an alternative to something like a Yamaha DX7 or FM8. It is really useful for interesting timbres, tones which cannot be synthesized in a typical subtractive synth. And then there's Wavetable, the newest addition to Ableton, and it's a Wavetable synthesizer, so like a simplified version of something you might find in Serum or Massive or Vital. And it's useful for creating more complex evolving soundscapes, as well as simpler patches, of course, because you've got these really cool oscillators that can morph between different timbres. Just a quick break before we go back to the tutorial. If you find these type of videos helpful, we can highly recommend the PML Academy with over 35 full-length online courses, spreading over topics like writing chords and melodies or arranging your songs to producing entire songs from start to finish. So check out the link in the description to see what's inside the All Courses bundle exactly. Okay, so the second category of workflow tips is going to be adding and editing MIDI in a smart way. Most of electronic music is produced using MIDI clips. And so most of your time in Ableton, a lot of the time, it's spent tweaking MIDI clips and MIDI information. And there are quite a lot of things that can make this much easier for you. So a really quick and simple way of having a better experience while producing, if you don't have a MIDI keyboard or you're on the go and you don't have a MIDI keyboard plugged in, is to uh, not only be able to switch octaves with Z and X, but also to be able to switch the velocity with the keys C and V. For example, here I'm going to add a piano to demonstrate that and I'm going to press the C3 key. This is the default velocity, but if I click C, you can see that we've gone down uh, to 80, now 60, 40, 20 and velocity 1. So this is really, really useful. A lot of patches, even in synthesizers, respond really well to velocity and to be able to control that without having to go through dropping like a MIDI effect just with the keyboard shortcuts, this is really, really useful. So C for lower velocity and V for higher velocity. And of course, M to toggle on and off the MIDI computer keyboard. Okay, so tip number five would be to use the capture tool of Ableton Live. So since Live 10, the program offers a really nice feature, which is called Capture MIDI, and it's located right here at the top, and it basically allows you to capture any MIDI that you haven't recorded. For instance, I'm going to play a very simple melody here, and if you click it, it automatically puts that MIDI, even if we haven't been recording, into the arrangement. Basically, if you're improvising and you would like to go back to a certain idea, but you haven't been recording and you're not sure how to go back and play that again, you can just hit Capture MIDI and it remembers over 16, and it actually remembers 16,000 MIDI events. And so you are sure that your last pattern is not lost if you hit the Capture MIDI icon. And tip number six would be for drawing MIDI velocity. Editing MIDI velocities can be time consuming, but it's really, really important in order for drum loops to feel alive and the same for any MIDI melodic patterns that respond to velocity. This is really crucial for music to have some sort of expressiveness, but sometimes you need to manually uh, add that in if you're recording, for example, your computer keyboard and you haven't, you don't have any velocity applied yet. For instance, I will add a quick MIDI clip here and I will expand the velocity section. First tip would be to press B and that enters draw mode and you are able to draw in 
the velocity shapes that you desire. And when draw mode is enabled, you can actually press option and click and drag to add velocities in a straight line. For example, we can do something like this and then repeat that four times. And this is really, really handy if you don't want to just drag each and every uh, velocity slider up and down. And tip number seven would be automation flex points. So for instance, we can record a bit of an automation here. And for example, I am going to record the reverb automation here. We can disable the drums. I will just record the automation. Right, so this is what we have. Let's expand this onto a new lane. And when you hover your mouse over this automation, you can see these dots in the corners and here. And these actually allow you to mess around with the automation once it's been recorded without having to, you know, zoom in and tweak every single breakpoint, which would be incredibly time consuming. So for example, if we click something like this, we can skew this automation and we can do even uh, crazier stuff like inverting it completely and... Uh, this is really, really nice. In this way, if you've recorded an automation and you'd like to slightly edit it, for example, it doesn't go as high as you would like to, but you still like the shape that you've recorded, you can quickly edit it here. So it's uh, it's way easier than just drawing in something or editing breakpoints when there's so many of these right here. And if you drag these up and down, you can edit the height of the entire section. So you can narrow it down with these controls as well. So tip number eight would be converting tracks to audio without having to freeze and flatten which is really really useful if you're working with cpu heavy synths and for instance in wavetable once you crank the unison it gets cpu heavy at times so once you have any pattern recorded you can just freeze the track so right click on its name press freeze make a new audio track and you don't have to flatten this track to get audio you can just hold option and drag it onto a new track. And this is now saved as an audio clip. You can edit it, do whatever you want with it. And if you'd like to save this track, you can just put it in a group and uh, save it for later. This way you can actually work with CPU heavy synthesizers without losing the MIDI information and the preset. Now it's very common practice to process, for example, the kick drum in parallel mode, meaning separating low frequencies from the mids and from the highs and processing these bands differently. You always can just duplicate your track for each band, but this then gets trickier once you start editing the MIDI because you have to copy over the same MIDI into three bands and it's always also three times as CPU intensive. So instead of duplicating, you can have something called a parallel processing rack. And this is really, really simple to set up. So all you need to do is load up EQ3, which is a really, really simple three band EQ. You need to group it. So command G and expand the chains by clicking this icon. I'm going to minimize white table here. And now you've got these three bands, which are divided by these frequencies. So this is the border between the lows and mids, and this is the border between the mids and highs. And you can uh, just set these bands yourself as you desire, but we might actually want to map these bands onto our macros so that we can edit the entire uh, rack at once. Now I can just duplicate this chain three times, disable the mids and highs and call this lows. Same process for the mids and same process for the highs. And now actually uh, we can edit the bands between these layers. We have a parallel processing rack set up. And now if you'd like to use, for example, an overdrive, just drop it on, for example, the low end. And if you'd like to put, I don't know, reverb on the high end, you can put that on there. And that's it. So tip number 10 would be to save defaults for audio effects and instruments. If you find a lot of the time that, for example, when you load up reverb, you end up uh, disabling some effects or going to high quality mode instead of echo, you might just want to change the default presets for reverb. That's really easy. All you need to do is just choose some settings that you would like to be the default settings, right click on reverb and go to save as default preset. And now every time you load up 
reverb, it is going to uh, appear just as you've saved it. And this goes for all the Ableton native instruments, audio and MIDI effects, and it is a really helpful way of speeding up your overall production process because you're not going over the same settings over and over. It loads up exactly how you want it to be. For instance, in Wavetable, uh, you might want to have the frequency knob assigned to an envelope, which is not done by default. So you might want to map the frequency knob to an envelope. That's because most patches are going to use some sort of envelope on the frequency knob. You might also want to edit that envelope, for example, like this, and you might want to save that as a default preset. And now every time you load up Wavetable, it is going to show up with an envelope assigned to the filter cuts off. All right, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you found something useful out of these 10 workflow tips. Consider checking out our Music Production Academy. We've got a lot of start to finish courses for both beginners and more advanced producers. Subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you like this video, hit the like button and comment, and I will see you in the next ones.